Hello, everyone. I'm Archita from India. I'm a design graduate, and I've been working with QED42 for the last one and a half years. Today, in this 30-minute session, I'll be condensing all my learnings from the last pro various projects, though it is difficult to do it uh, one year long and putting it down in like 25 minutes, but I'll try my best. Out of the various design services that we offer in QED, um, UI UX is one of the major one, and I get to interact with the clients and dev team a lot when I work on the UX projects with the company. So this is my first time here. I'm really excited. Let's start. Yeah. So my journey towards uh, designing for Drupal has been really exciting. Uh, but at the same time, it has been quite challenging for me um, as I, the industry was new. So back at the college, we have been trained to design with no boundaries. But when I came to the industry, I realized that, yes, there are boundaries and there are limitations that you have to look at. Um, so this is what I'm going to talk about here. And I have learned in these various projects how to mold uh, creative solutions to effective solutions. Not that a digital strategy or a design strategy cannot be applied in Drupal or cannot be, is not possible in Drupal, but there are real life constraints uh, according to the budget and the time given on a specific project. Who do I interact with? Clients who are very particular, they have their priorities straight. Developers who are generally say no to things, they are, very t they are very concerned about technical feasibility all the time. So there are times when I have to bridge the gap between the two also at times. Let's see what the developers have to say about designers. The audio is not playing. Just give me a minute. I'm sorry. Can we check the audio, please? He's a front-end developer, that's what he said. <laughs> okay, I'll check my desktop if the video I have works from there. Oh, it's not working here as well. Okay, moving further, uh, maybe we can come back to listen to Morton later. So the major challenges that I have faced while working different, with different teams is um, that communication challenges. The first communication challenges co come when you cannot interact with someone. It could be due to various reasons. Someone is not available, or there are times when you work on multiple projects, and it, it depends on the, how big your firm is and how accessible people are to you. This, the second one is optimizing value, the time and cost. So generally, we try to deliver uh, the most creative solution to people, to our clients. But we have to consider the time and the cost that they are setting up, uh, that the client really needs. So we have to deliver exactly what is needed for the business, and nothing less, nothing more. The third is the feasible, feasibility constraints. Now, feasibility is not always about what can be done or cannot be done. It is about, is it really needed for the business? So according to me, the solution is communication. It is as simple as communication. But 
when and at what stages of the project. Coming to the roadmap, where the first section is discovery, where we empathize with the user and the client. We try to understand the user behavior and, and get all the, grab all the uh, things that the client wants from the, from the project. Second, we define all the findings, all the unstructured findings that we found in the empathy stage. We define them to a concrete problem that we have to solve. And as you see, in the first step, we are interacting with the user and the client. The second one is where we are interacting with the client as well as the dev team here. Because the earlier we let the dev team know the why behind the design decisions, the better judgment will they be able to make at later stages of the project. So it is very important for them to know about each design, design decision we make. Discovering the project, it is very important to understand the business and what is it exactly wants to achieve right in the beginning of the project. So the questionnaire that we ask our clients have to be very direct and not abstract. We, we have to ask them direct questions that are exactly related to the design brand or the UX. So this is a link to uh, the questionnaire that we use back at QED. You can download it from here. It has both UX and brand questions that you can ask your clients in the, ne in the in projects. This is an example of a um, project which, which had multiple pages to be designed. So, I had, I had interacted with the client already, but this, since this was like one of the initial projects I was working on, I, I, I listed down all the pages that I had to design, but I did not set priority to what was important and what was really needed for the business. This is a profile page. This is just an example, which took me a day to design because I was trying to be very intricate with it. I did not know this was really not important for the launch of the website. And this took one day for me and probably two days for the dev team to get this up. And this, in total, got us three days down. This wasn't important for the phase one. But if you see that one page is costing us three days and a number of pages would, would cost us two weeks, and two weeks of, of loss is a big thing. So business alignment comes with discovering the project, where, that which is very important. So you need to know what is absolutely important to build first and what Next, the priority, basically. The need of understanding budget, which is very important. So when I design a project, uh, a website, say a homepage, I go with what the brand wants or what the brand looks like, the, the philosophy, the characteristics of the brand. I, here, uh, this was a designer profile uh, website that I was making. I put in all the parallax effects and animations, but I did not know that the, the client did not have that much of a budget to launch the website. I, I made a lot, I definitely spent more than a week on this, but this wasn't executed, so this was a waste of my time. The second phase is prototyping and testing. Wireframing, right. So even the, the developers need to come in here as when I'm wireframing, maybe I'm just paper prototyping and everything is just in a rough stage. It is, but I still have my feature set ready and enough, tangible enough to show to the, to the dev team. So the feature set shown to the dev, dev team can bring in some, uh, you know, suggestions or critique from their end that the structure of the app. Wireframing, prototyping, and usability testing needs high involvement from the dev team as well. This is another example of uh, a project. This was, um, a, it, it is a medical, it is for a medical institution. As you see the, the, the cross marked in here, when I designed the two pages, I thought it was obvious for the dev, dev team to understand that the transition is going to be horizontal, it's going to be a horizontal scroll, but, um, and it was very later in the project de de delivered to them that it had to be a horizontal scroll and not a vertical scroll, uh, which costed us a lot more extra time than it would have when, if I told them right in the beginning, the animations right in the prototyping stage of the roadmap that I explained. 
Right, so yeah, it was a uh, blunder. Anyway, this is uh, another project where you see the green, the tags there, and uh, the option one that I made could, if, if I X out the tag, it gets deleted from there. And the second option, 2.1, is the one I can click on edit on the right, and then this 2.2 pops up and I can either edit it or delete it. So option one and two are two different um, uh, ways of doing it, UI, um, user interface options. But, and it doesn't, both are quite similar in the user experience as well. But this, these two options have, did save a lot of dev time required to build, it, build this. And that's why UI considerations are important because at places where the UX is not getting affected by the UI, it is important to pick up that UI option which does not let, you know, make my dev team work more than what is required, what is actually required for the project. This is another example where uh, the I didn't back up. So um, here, this was the first option of the design that I made. You see the red button which shows um, real-time property count. Um, as, and this is a filter page. So it's a search flow where I select the filters and the red button shows me real-time count of the properties. Uh, this was definitely going to take a lot of time for my dev team to get this uh, going. Um, we had a discussion and the client wanted this. This was definitely a better usability for the user. So we went ahead with this option. Because we, we did not, why don't we change the UI here? Because sometimes we have to go with, with what the client wants or what is actually a better UX. Now, if we removed this real-time button, a property count showing button, it would change the UX a lot. It would get it down by a lot of points. So we went ahead and spent more time on dev here and executed this. The last stage is production. Um, when the, the designs are going into production, it is still important for us to be involved with the front-end developers here because we can't leave it on them. Uh, in the user interface design, when the visual designs are, are actually coming to life, it is important for us to be there and you know, deliver every, the style guides and the font types and images um, perfectly. The font types, right. So um, it is, I have learned in the last few um, uh, projects that I've worked on that using multiple fonts in, on a web page is, is not a good thing. So this again contrasts to my learnings from my college, from my university, where uh, we, we used to use the fanciest of the fonts and the uh, numerous fonts and different uh, type um, font weights and sizes to use typography. But again, as Morton, we couldn't watch Morton's video, but he said that we have to understand it's not a movie, it's not flash, it is, web is web. So that has to be considered here. Using minimum font types will improve performance of the website, which is the functionality improves, the better the web page is. Yes. So have you plugged in your audio or? Um, Sorry haven't. guys, right here is your audio. Okay, thank you. And then that should, mm. yeah. Hmm? Okay, I can also play it at the end. Um, we can just. Right, so these are the materials which we need to deliver to the dev team uh, right on time for them to be able to execute this perfectly and bring our designs to life. So the roadmap I just explained will definitely not be successful without a kickoff meeting. And the kickoff meeting should not just be a 30 minutes block of um, you know, reviewing documentation or timelines. It should be very collaborative. We can have 
interactive exercises or get everyone thinking, the, the entire team, the design, the dev sites, everyone thinking on the same lines about technical feasibility and design priorities. So the designer-developer collaboration has gone quite ahead. You should definitely check out patternlab.io where you see designs coming to patterns, and I'm going to talk about component-specific design here. Th these are examples from different websites. The, the ones in the red are blocks, similar components, which have been reused, even this one. And these three are three different kinds of website. The first one on the left is a linear website, as you see. The, the one in the center is a content-heavy website, very informational. The one on the right is um, a design-intensive uh, website. But all uh, have similar components, and this is what I want to talk about. I believe that if you have an in-house team uh, of designers and developers, you can come up with a set of components that can be reused in various projects in the future. So it's like a one-time investment or strategizing where you build a set of components and you can work on them and use them later, reuse them in the later projects. These are quick benefits of atomic design. Um, I'll, I point out the f uh, fifth one. So uh, when, because of the atomic design, like we built the components earlier and we can reuse them so it, the grid is defined. You, you do not have to pay much attention to the, to the pixel, perfection, pixel perfect execution of it. And so cutting down time on the UI, we can invest that time more on the UX. So as a designer, if my time is, if I do not have to re invest the time on the UI, I can uh, use that time and look at the UX required for a variety of projects that I'm working in the future. So, uh, this is the session you can attend after this. Uh, he, uh, he will be talking about um, Drupal component design. Uh, it's today in Strauss, uh, five to eight, <laughs> five to six. Uh, I'm summarizing here now. This is the conclusion slide for my session today. Um, it is my take on a project plan. It could be sub subjective. It could be worked upon later. Um, it could be refined in the future. But as of now, I want to put this down here. This is the roadmap from the left to the right. The dotted uh, red lines that you see is the involvement of the dev team that I feel should be there on every project. And after every stage I've put it down, the, ha the longer the line, the more involvement of the developers needed. So that is how I've represented it. As the fidelity of the design increases from the left to the right, you see the involvement of the de developers and their feedback coming in on the project also increases. I, I believe this is the way it should be taken forward. Yes. Um. You can um, tell me what you felt about the session. There's a link for this um, survey. And any questions? Oh, I'll play the video. Hi, my name is Morten DK. I've been working uh, with Drupal for many, many years. Uh, as part of the front-end development, also as a designer. But So my primary experience about working with designers has been like the the hardest part of them to understand what we're trying to achieve by building a website. And that can be a hard thing to get if you're not used to, um, or not as involved in traditional media as you are, as you, if you work as a female, or understand HTML and CSS. So my biggest concern, I would say, by working with designers is their lack of understanding what HTML and CSS can do. Um, and having ideas that it's, uh, it's a movie, or it's a flash thing, or it's a newspaper. It's like they kind of forget that the web is the web, and that's like the biggest uh, like issue. The best thing about working with designers is that they're creative people, and you can they can help you push so much more of what, what we're gonna do. The worst thing is if they don't understand the MVP perspective of the project, but they can help you push the boundaries, make stuff prettier, make it easier to self-organize, uh, and it can also go the other. So, um, 
I would hope designers got better to learn the media really to learn to, to really learn how to what you can create just by building a website and not doing like a movie or a flash thingy or whatever you can do. I really like working with designers. Um, I come from a designery background myself. Um, I focus on front end, so I have a really good time sitting down with designers and figuring out the best way to do all the triple things that we can do. I really like it, and I think there should be more collaboration between designers and developers in the Drupal community. Thank you. So as a young designer, what's, what has been your more, your painful, your more <laughs> painful part? So what has been the hard part for you? Redesigning, <laughs> redoing my work all the time. So I think, but that has helped me learn and that has been exciting. That is exactly what has been fa fascinating about redoing work and learning myself, working with developers. Who, who are actually very, you know, from a different world altogether. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>